for everyone this evening. And they're going to hear less from us and more from our friends and neighbors. Right you are about that one, Marcia. So why don't we get started? All right. I wear many hats around here, but tonight it's all things Urban League of Greater Cleveland. And I'm going to take you on a journey where you might be surprised about the people we meet along the way. You can go on a journey prepared, perhaps with a compass, map, or landmark descriptions. Journeys can be flights of fancy or have no clear purpose with a destination in mind. Entrepreneurship is one of the mile markers on our journey today. Minority Business Assistance Center, the Small Business Development Center, and UBiz Venture Capital Revolving Loan Fund are just a few things to look out for. Sometimes we join the journey in progress. That is the case with our three entrepreneurs, Althea, Mariko, and Mary. Our landmarks are a retail store, a personal protection business, and a vegan restaurant. Fashion is communication. Whenever you get dressed in the morning, you're telling people what you want them to think about you or how they should approach you. When you get dressed up in your fancy clothes, you're letting everyone know to approach you like a queen, right? But if I'm just throwing on some jogging pants and a t-shirt, I might just be running errands that day. I developed the idea for No Basis while I was studying abroad my senior year of college. I lived in Strasbourg, France for six months. However, I could not speak the native language. So I'm walking around, I'm trying to use public transportation, order food off of menus, and I could not speak French. So I got an idea to get a shirt made that said Parlez-vous Anglais, which means do you speak English? Immediately, my peers in France started to approach me differently. They would either, either try and practice uh, their English with me or at least show me, you know, a little bit more accommodation because they knew that I could not speak the native language. I got back after studying abroad in France in my senior year of college, and I went on the natural trajectory of getting a job within my field of supply chain management and marketing. However, the idea for No Basis just never went away. Um, I, I lived it, I breathed it. So after I was working my full-time job as an analyst, I would go home and work on my website, I would do vending events, I would um, set up my social channels for No Basis. And I ended up in 2016 taking a leap of faith and putting all my eggs into the No Basis basket. And in the year of 2017, I ended up opening my brick and mortar store. So the name No Basis is because you create the base. The brand itself can stand for anything, but it's all about what you make it. So you can express anything from your favorite uh, mood or catchphrase, inside joke or political belief, but we ourselves, we have no base. We're whatever you want to make it. No Basis is a customizable apparel company located inside of Great Northern Mall. When you come into our store, there'll be a team of creative coaches, which is our sales associates, who will greet you and they'll help you to express yourself on one of our streetwear items. You better shop around. Shop. Oh, shop yeah. Around. You better oh. shop around. Shop around. Uh -huh. There's some things that I want you to know now. I consider myself a self starter and a lifelong learner. So all throughout college, I was looking for internships. I would pack up a briefcase and walk up and down Mayfield Road and seeing if I could turn my resume in for an internship. So being a mom of five boys ranging from ages 20 to 13 weeks, I may not be the likeliest person to be an entrepreneur. I work full time and I just received my master's of science degree in justice administration. So I have a lot on my plate. I came up with the name Pretty Defense and started thinking about this business concept. I began asking myself a million questions. Can I do this? Will it be lucrative? Will people support it? I officially launched Self Shield USA in 2019. We offer business solutions to other self-defense companies around the United States and internationally. What attracted me to this business specifically is the line of work that I do and just seeing the need for people to be protected. So I was very, very nervous because I'm working full time. Being an entrepreneur is not easy. There are many, many late nights, not getting a lot of sleep, you know, and just being tired. But it's something that you have to do if you know you want to have a successful business. Our first milestone was our ribbon cutting ceremony that we had in June of 2021. 
we were operating out of our home. My dining room was full of merchandise and products and self-protection items. We love eating dinner at the dinner table as a family, and we just couldn't do that anymore. And so I decided to lease space in Cleveland Heights. A day in the life here at South Shield USA and Pretty Defense is extremely busy. There are a lot of late nights and early mornings. This is a family-based business, and so my boys that are 13 and 14, they are helping me all the time. They are very hands-on with our business. They help with the packaging, the labeling, the shipping, and the processing of orders. We are taking phone calls all day. We're going live on social media, so it's really busy around here. Social media is a big part of our business here at Social USA and Pretty Defense. We go on social media every single day, multiple times a day, because we have to get the word out about our business. We're able to showcase the many products that we have here in office, from our self-defense keychains, our pepper spray, our stun guns, and other items that we have to keep people protected. And then with this one, you just push the sides like that, and then you turn it off by pushing this gray button. The Urban League has contributed to my success in a tremendous way. The assistance that I receive from the Urban League is invaluable. At the Urban League, they have the Small Business Center, they have the Entrepreneurship Center, and they have offered me so much support from the start of my business to today. The Urban League provides what I like to call a wraparound service to their clients. They offer workshops, certification, they help with business planning, and so many other services. So I can become a minority business enterprise, or a women business enterprise, or both. They also offer financial services, loans, and capital to start up businesses, or businesses that are already going. If I can teach them how to love the food that they're eating, then they'll be fine. Vitamin Candy was born back in 2009. Um, I was 120 pounds overweight and uh, decided to take my life back. After a failed marriage, you know, just kind of letting myself go, I um, did some research on a lunch break one day working for Cleveland School District. And I um, found out it was a local gym that, you know, offered help with, you know, losing weight. And so what I did was signed up for the orientation, went to the gym, did all the good stuff, and I started, you know, taking classes three days a week other couple days I would work out on my own. And fast forward a little, that uh, led to me actually losing a lot of weight, which was the 120, and then in 2010 I became a certified personal trainer. Um, after that, Vitamin Candy was born because I had, uh, had developed some digestive tract issues because of the weight loss that was so rapid, you know, and a lot of people don't know when you do that you really change your systems. I was going to all natural way and found out when you mix acidic fruits and vegetables together along with herbs that it'll help flush your system the correct way. And that is really how Vitamin Candy was born. Straight out of high school, I was working for Cleveland School District, doing hair at the same time. And then um, when I found out that really it was business that I wanted to go into, hair industry wasn't it, I just kind of pursued more of a um, more education in the in the school system. Actually, my childhood friends and we had reconnected, and um, we had talked about you know started our own businesses. He was doing like a t-shirt line, company line, or whatever, and I was talking about vitamin candy. I ran this idea by him. He was like, "Well, I went to Urban League, and I you know I went through all these certifications, and I, you know created my LLC." So he showed me online how to create the LLC. I had already applied for the Cleveland City Mine. And it was an um, a, a entry-level position. And I was like, you know what? They're starting at like almost $20 an hour. I'm just going to apply and just see what happens. I left Cleveland Clinic and the Cleveland Public Library to go and work for Cleveland City Mine as a lead rock mechanics engineer to help train interns that work all over the world, coming from all over the world, how to shoot distances in the ceilings and in the roof so that they can get the salt that we have on the streets, the salt that we eat and all that stuff. I had saved up about $50,000 and I opened up my first gym in University Heights. And um, that's when I got involved heavily with Urban League because I met Shoshana Duckburg. The Small Business Development Center, or SBDC, provides technical assistance to small businesses looking to start, sustain, or grow their businesses. Through both of these centers, we offer various innovative webinars and workshops. 
We also have UBS Venture Capital Revolving Loan Fund, headed by Michael Obi. She was teaching me how to get like my credit and everything together, and um, she had introduced some services and, and some certification opportunities that I could have. I signed up for some business courses, and um, I took a class that taught me how to pursue more certifications, but then I started taking classes to become bankable, you know, and things of that sort. Vitamin Candy Cafe was born in 2018. Um, I found out the need for the food and the education was mo the most important to my clients. And so I was like, I have to do something about this. And um, the best way I can do it is to teach through food. And the food is one of my love languages. So if I can teach them how to love the food that they're eating, then they'll be fine. 2018, I shut the gym down. I didn't renew my lease because I wanted to open up the cafes. I had already started the blueprint. In 2019, I, after still pursuing a location to open up the cafe, I said, um, Glenville District, I like to call it, or Glen Village is the name of the building. And um, in the process, I was blessed with an opportunity to open up uh, my other location, which was located in Richmond Mall, Richmond Square Mall in Richmond Heights. We'll pick up with our entrepreneurs on their journey in just a bit. You know, there are times when the road one takes is straight ahead and sometimes winding, but not off course. But one thing we know for sure, sometimes a little guidance is needed. Our entrepreneurs were able to continue their journeys in part because of the programs and the services provided by the Urban League. Your gift to the Urban League allows that to continue. You may do so in several ways by visiting the website, using the QR code on your screen, text to give, or by calling the Urban League. Please make your gift today. Wake up. It's payday. Yeah, meaning we can tackle these bills and make a budget. Where's Mr. Puffington? Payday means shopping. <laughs> payday means paying down our loans because we had to study philosophy. Oh, calm down. I'm sure we'll figure out money someday. Some days right now, and we could use some help. Um, did we have to sell Mr. Puffington? Throughout your entire life, you've been in your own head about money. We're here to help. KeyBank opens doors. It'll be okay. No! DAP Rapid Fuse Fast Curing Gel bonds virtually everything. Pinpoint precision. No drips or runs. <sighs> like it never happened. What are you waiting for? Get to Tri-C. The right education can boost your lifetime earning power by hundreds of thousands of dollars. Start now with college education you can afford. Tri-C is where futures begin. Without adequate fuel, you can't go far. Sponsors help fuel our journey through their support. So let's catch up with Althea, Mariko, and Mary. I went into the Urban League and I connected with a business advisor. That business advisor introduced me to a, a lot of opportunity that happened throughout the pandemic. The Entrepreneurship Center at Urban League of Greater Cleveland consists of three different centers. Our Minority Business Assistance Center, or MBAC, is available to assist minority businesses with technical assistance, business certifications, contract procurements, and accessing capital. I was able to attend some of the webinars and programs hosted by the Urban League that taught me how to apply and make sure that I was qualified for some of that funding. One of the courses I took through the Urban League is Becoming Bankable. Becoming Bankable is an absolutely wonderful course for all entrepreneurs because it helps you to understand your books. Uh, no entrepreneur can survive without understanding their finances. And that's what bank Becoming Bankable did for me. They broke down how to keep a, a balance sheet, a cash flow statement, and a tons of other accounting records. And so the Becoming Bankable sessions have been a great help to me. What motivates me, honestly, is inspiring people. So even if it seems like it's just t-shirts or it's just a boutique, what I love to see is other entrepreneurs and other young adults come into my store and see me in a place of leadership and get inspired to go after their own dreams. So even when I'm having a bad day or an off day and someone comes in and they see me in my position and they're like, wow, this is so cool, is this your store? Um, and we begin to talk. 
that alone can turn my day around because I know that I just inspired someone to go after their own dreams. In the news, you hear so much about women and children being victimized from sexual assault, rapes, carjackings, you name it. And what motivates me is to ensure that women and children all over the world are protected with my self-protection items. The Urban League feeds into an entrepreneurship's enthusiasm. I remember one day I was in the office, I was swamped with orders, and Shoshana popped up in my office, and I was so surprised, but she just wanted to come and see what I was doing and offer support to me. And I was just so amazed that they are just so hands-on with their entrepreneurs. The fact that she took time out of her day to stop by my office meant the world to me. And she was impressed with what I was doing, and it really gave me the enthusiasm and the courage to keep going. So whether you are in the ideation phase and in need of a business plan, or you are in the growth or development phase and are in need of a strategic plan, business certifications, or capital, we have a team of certified business advisors here to assist you. My advice for aspiring entrepreneurs is to invest any money they make back into their business. It's important for my children to see my enthusiasm and my determination to succeed. Manny wants to be an entrepreneur, and so I think it's important for him to see me doing the things that I do and also to be hands-on in my operation of my business every day. I don't want them to feel like they have any obstacles to get in their way in the things that they want to do in life. You better shop around. Oh, yeah. up a vegan restaurant was important to me because when COVID-19 hit, a lot of the people in the food desert communities were unaware of all these natural herbs that can really help boost the immune system and protect them from this virus. I actually was blessed enough to stay open at Glenville during the time. I like teaching and I wanted people to know that you don't have to go buy all of these medications. A lot of people benefited from the packages that I sold, like the um, herbal packages, which was my cold pressed juice in the powder form, my sea moss capsules, and ginger shots. What helps me excel in my business is the mental and spiritual side. It's a strength because we're really not in tune with that. Mental and spiritual health is the way to, to live. That's what creates longevity. It's not the physical aspect of it. If you're not well inside, how can you be well outside? During this process of opening up the second location on Detroit Shoreway, I also went back to Urban League so that I can revamp my business plan, and Shoshana did help with that. Um, she went through it with her team with the fine tooth comb to make sure that it was up to date so that I can pr present my proposal to the location that I wanted and it can be accurate and successful for me. What drives me is um, God first, my mom, um, my family is everything to me, so everything I do is for them. I used to want a huge family, like my own little, you know, an immediate family, but that wasn't my assignment. I understood what I'm supposed to do, so I, uh, I feel like I am a gift, so to speak, to my city to teach them things that I would have probably taught my children if I had any. And so that, that's really the, the, the drive for me. My God first and my mom. And really, the, the, I would like to say the environment in which we live in, because I feel like it's a gift that we receive. If you listen, if you just stay silent for a minute and you listen to the wind blow, God is saying something somewhere in between there. If you ever visited a farm and you just sat there on the land and just touched the soil, you can feel God within that. And so I think it's my assignment as one of his students to teach that to the rest of the world, even if it's just the city of Cleveland. Our second mile marker is workforce development. The Work Now program supports the talent development journey with coaching, building, critical thinking, soft skills, and emotional and social intelligence. Work Now empowers adults to see their potential, to identify their transferable skills, to work with what they have and to start from wherever they are. And connections are made for additional training and job placement. Please meet Mark, April, Ordell, and Paul. 
They represent carpentry, construction, laborers, and manufacturing. Or if you're at a job, I'm a general, you will always want to have a good attitude because that'll tell your boss that you're ready for the work and, and, and that you're reliable. I have an interesting work history at the work now. Um, they enrolled me into the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District, and um, I got hired in there as an um, as a ambassador, a neighborhood ambassador. And basically what we did there, we um, helped out the community of East Cleveland by um, helping them out with landscaping, picking up litter, all sorts of stuff like that just to help the community get better. We were uh, given computers, and those computers that we had, we, uh, we went on Khan Academy and they gave us various training. They taught us various things about the company and how to deal with hackers, basically on how hackers, they, they could go in your email, they could send you different links to get your information and re really mess you up um, in your job situation. It was a year program. And because of the pandemic, like I said, they weren't really hiring people full time. And I, and I said, you know what, let me make some connections back in the Urban League. And uh, they got me into uh, construction. North Star Contracting, what they basically did there, they did a lot of labor work, but I wanted to come in there as a carpenter. And they um, actually made me a carpenter later on, but when I first got hired in, they basically had me clean concrete forms using grinders and various power tools and hand tools. Talent development is a journey that we support with coaching, building critical thinking and soft skills, uh, emotional and social intelligence competencies, being responsible and accountable and managing your time and having a positive attitude. These are attributes that are in high demand. It's what makes the difference to our employer partners. They were laying a lot of people walk back then, so I thought to myself, I was like, I want something that I could have like stability in where I won't have to be laid off and this and that. So I told myself, I said, you know what? I called my teacher from the Urban League, which is another um, contribution that the Urban League gives you because they give you choices. I said, you know what? Let me tell I'm going if I'm old, I'm still um, available. The, one of the most important things that we do, um, which is um, in the winter, we, um, we plow the highways, it's snow and plow like um, different streets of um, snow and things like that. As I got into seasonal, um, I had to take a test to get into full time. Passed that test, now I'm in the full time. One of my role models growing up was my grandfather, and it's because he taught me how to work smarter and not harder. And basically what that means, you will want to work smarter, you don't want to strain yourself. I mean, because he was, a, he was a concrete mason, he also told me that there's a lot more uh, things in this, in this world other than going to college, and there's nothing wrong with going to college, but there's a lot more things that you could proceed in and have a stable income and a good life um, when you get older. So he always taught me that and I always appreciated that and I took that to mind. Because of the industry connections with Cleveland Builds, I was recently able to get a position as a carpenter's apprentice with Regency Construction, where I was trained by Lauren Benson. I was introduced to the Urban League through Goran Dillard. Our children actually go to the same daycare and he actually spotted our business logo on the side of my car for Battle Businesses. And from there, he was very adamant about getting me and LaMarco into the program and exposing us to the different opportunities that the Urban League provides. I do have a full and busy life, my husband and I raising four children. Um, the key to making it work is doing it as a team. LaMarco always wanted to do a duo team, so when we formed this business, um, I more so took the advertising and marketing and scheduling with customers, and we both got out there in the field and we made it happen. I got into the real estate business because LaMarco eventually got to the point where he was able to hire his own employees, and that gave me the freedom to take a step back and focus on real estate, which I've always had a passion for. My uncle has an investment company, and he allowed me to tag along and observe on some of his projects. When it came time for me and LaMarco to purchase our first property, we decided that it would be smart to do a owner-occupied multifamily. So we got that first multifamily and that gave us the ability to build our resources and to save up to purchase future investment properties. 
The appeal for me with rehabbing a property is really getting hands on and getting in there. If there's something that I can do, I want to do it. And that eventually leads to me acquiring additional skills, which I eventually went on to get my lead risk assessor's license, as well as my general contractor's license. And that has really helped me with getting these projects done. I enjoy rehabbing because where other people may see a deal breaker or a disaster, for me it's more so the end result in turning that disaster into someone's beautiful home. I'm on the guardrail crew this day, uh, mainly. And uh, when we go to uh, repair guardrail, basically what we do when we get there, uh, because the guardrail will either be hit by a car or something else will happen, so the guardrail is all bent up. So basically what we would have to do, we would have to get the chop saw, and we'll have to chop those different um, pieces of guardrail that's all bent up, and then once they're all chopped up, we'll put them in our truck. Work Now program taught me a lot of things that are very important when going out on a job site and an interview. And some of those things that they taught me was to be attentive when you're coming in in an in interview or when you're at the job site. Um, another thing was to stay um, on time and come to work on time, which is a very defining factor when you're keeping a job. Um, another thing that they taught was to be drug free because in a lot of lanes, if you're not drug free, there are not a lot of avenues for you to get work out here, especially in the construction field. And um, another thing that um, they taught me was to have a good attitude because when you come in for an interview, that attitude is everything in defining if you're going to get the job or not. And um, if you're on a job site or if you're at a job um, in general, you will always want to have a good attitude because that will tell your boss that you're ready for the work and, and, and that you're reliable. Now another thing that they taught me was your elevator pitch. And basically what your elevator pitch is when you go in an interview and you want to sell yourself basically and you tell yourself and you tell the people on the interview panel that hey, I'm here for the work and I'm ready for the work to get done in an efficient manner and that it's all about the work and that I'm trying to be a part of this team and do as much as I can to improve, as much as I can to be the best worker I can, I can be there. If we could get six more guys like Mark out of a program like this, ODOT would be a better place. It would strengthen our workforce and make us a better organization moving forward. The Work Now program assisted me in a very important factor and that's uh, networking and getting in with um, industry connections. Anything is possible um, if you put your mind to it, if you actually put your um, your your uh, your grind into it, and you can you can do anything possible. Um, and the Urban League helped me out a lot with that. The Urban League connected us with Cleveland Builds, which was a four-week pre-apprenticeship program, which really gave us hands-on training. They also exposed us to the different trades and really gave us connections to other parts of the industry. They also emphasized the importance of time management and how even something as little as being five minutes late can throw off the entire team and the project itself. To develop that character uh, and become a professional, it takes practice, effort, skills, but most importantly, it takes having a great positive attitude. Now you're seeing examples of that and exceptions of talent who've made a commitment to themselves to build a craft, uh, training, certifications, obtain a degree. Uh, they want and they believe that they can do it. Because of the industry connections with Cleveland Builds, I was recently able to get a position as a carpenter's apprentice with Regency Construction, where I was trained by Lauren Benson. I was very excited to see another African-American female as a journeywoman. I really enjoyed being trained by Lauren, working with the saw and the drill. She was able to provide me with some tips on things that will make me more productive working in the field. Connecting with the Urban League has put me on the pathway to becoming a journeywoman carpenter alongside other women such as Lauren. Do you see yourself or a family member as an entrepreneur? 
or in one of these trades. Call the phone number on your screen for more information. Or if you're inspired, ask about becoming a member of the Urban League and consider lending a hand through volunteering. Standing strong for our customers, employees, and communities is at the heart of what we do every day. Whether it's helping someone achieve their financial goals, investing in a neighborhood's growth, or using the power of diversity, we are committed to being a fifth third better for you. Here at the Cleveland Clinic, we're trying to reduce suffering in healthcare. We are working hard to keep you safe, care for you as a person, and be with you every step of the way. This year, we have coached over 2,500 adults. We've made over 1,100 job referrals, placed over 300 adults in jobs with sustainable living wages. The pandemic interrupted my career. I was working for a company that, for the past 14 years, Iconic, and was subsequently laid off. They were reducing staffing costs, and my team was partially cut. I received a severance package, which was pretty generous, and it allowed me to kind of spend time, recalibrate with my family, and, you know, gave me a summer off before actually having to jump back and look into the workforce. I haven't had a summer off since I was a kid, so this was actually perfect for my wife, who was a teacher. Uh, we actually kind of developed a routine with we would actually go biking and walking in the morning. Uh, we actually explored a lot of cooking classes, took a lot of different types of photos, perfecting a little bit more with nature, a uh, little bit of ourselves at the same time, trying to just re-engage. Uh, we have been, this year makes actually 20 years that we were married, so this was actually good to kind of rebond a little bit on a different note and enjoy our time with each other. After this summer was over and both my daughter uh, was returning to school and my wife was returning back to work, uh, I actually just spent some time, I did a lot of volunteering, but then I also felt the need that now it's about time for me to actually get back to work uh, and begin that process. I had been a moment since I had I uh, actually interviewed for a job. I talked to a couple friends and one who was working with the small business development for the Urban League. And he was, spoke very highly of how he benefited for the services, told me to check out the Urban League website. I found the subsequent Ohio to Work, which also prompted me responding with a correspondence and beginning getting engaged at that point from there. But with the Ohio to Work, uh, the subsequent tools that engaged me, one was the, the not only was, they signed me with a mentor or an advisor who actually, one, got to know me, got to know my background, reviewed my resume to see if there's any updates, adjustments that needed to be made. There were follow-ups uh, where we actually talked to a panel and led to eventually going to actual online job fairs. Now, the virtual job fair was a new space for me and I was glad that they, the services from the Urban League that provided me some of the preliminary tools because A, it's new, B, uh, trying to be comfortable with just online initially. One thing I, I was, was, was very appreciative of the Urban League was the preliminary aspect of it. They walked us through what to expect, the options of being able to see multiple employers, some whom I had never heard of before, which gave me additional exposure and additional prep, which eventually led me to, um, you know, subsequently working for a job, not from the initial job fair, but it was just something that, a tool that I used actually worked with and actually benefited from the Urban League. One of the subsequent tools in addition to the coaching was the Pymetric process. The Pymetric was a, is an internalizing uh, assessment it also reviewed some of my answers, gave me test questions, and some of the preliminary prep of what interviewers are looking for at the various stages. So that, in addition to my own research, were the tools that actually helped me subsequently land to a job where I'm currently now. My grandfather, he was a hardworking man. He was always there for me. Uh, we always, like, when he had, like, jobs and products and do, we, I come with him, put a drywall and stuff like that and do roofing. 
and he always taught me to always be a better man. Human capital is a valuable commodity. Every industry sector in our workforce ecosystem needs it. The pandemic really changed our approach, but not our mission. The pathway to empowerment and wealth generation is a sustainable living wage. So the adults that we serve uh, are in transition. We simply need to meet them where they are. We join the talent journey. It really takes authentic and inclusive leadership practices to collaborate as a community of stakeholders and connect opportunity with need. Everyone contributes with optimism, compassion, hope, and shared vision to address these challenges and needs that everyone in the Northeast Ohio workforce ecosystem faces. The Work Now program taught me a lot. Communication, be at work on time, and great work ethic. I'm currently working for a company called Pentair. Uh, it's headquartered in Minnesota. However, I work in the Chardon location. My title is the Senior Manufacturing Financial Analyst. Uh, in short, I'm the controller for the actual location. A lot of the great aspects of the, the Urban League's process was not only the, the, the patients, the re, uh, I would call it the follow-up, uh, the connection that you know, included encouragement and also the dialogue to see, you know, the pros and cons. If I had a preliminary interview to talk about the dialogue, to kind of debrief, to see what things I needed to improve upon, or if I did well, you know, get that type of additional feedback. Those services allowed me to kind of internalize a little bit to see what things I need to improve on or, and what things I need to also help share. I grew up in a very uh, service, very service-oriented household. I uh, believe in doing a lot for the community. I do a lot for the community now, and I had a lot of friends who were affected by the pandemic. I immediately reached out to the coaching staff and asked, hey, I have some people. Do you have the bandwidth? Can, we, can I refer them to you? Here is a little bit more background for them. I'm going to reach out to them, but I wanted to touch base with you first and begin trying to connect them to so they can benefit from the services that I thought were helpful uh, in turn to try to return back into the workforce. The Ohio to Work, in partnership with the Urban League, was very vital and very important to help me get back into the workforce after being laid off because of the pandemic. The tools, the resources, the relationships all worked hand in hand and it's something that allowed me to now work into a field that I can really continue to enjoy. Urban League of Greater Cleveland brings us an aspect of being able to help benefit those individuals that are underserved and in the urban core and to be able to see their path forward that they may not have been able to before. Urban League is 100 years old. It has a long history of creating good partnerships and getting into good partnerships. And within the Workforce Development Department, that has been a great niche in partnering with local companies and organizations to get people employed. We've done that, but with the partnership with Jobs Ohio and the opportunities that Jobs Ohio brings, which was a more strategic focus on partnerships for an outcome. That's why I keep saying the words diversity, equity, and inclusion. Now, companies are really focused on hiring a diverse population. They've connected with employers that maybe they did not have as deep of a relationship with prior to Ohio to Work launching in the Cleveland market. They've also found a collaboration at a different level with their other partners like the Ohio Means Jobs Office and Goodwill and have found good synergy among those other partners to help continue to outreach to job seekers or those on the sidelines and have cross-referred individuals. They've been able to broaden their horizons about what might be available to their job seekers, which makes them even better at their job of coaching those job seekers because now they know where all the different programs are and what availability there is to bring down some of those barriers like transportation, um, childcare, and some of those things that hinder individuals to find employment opportunities. Good evening. My name is Amanda Petrak, and I am KeyBank's Corporate Responsibility Officer in Northeast Ohio. As Cleveland's hometown bank, 
KeyBank is pleased to be a sponsor of the Urban League of Greater Cleveland's 2021 Equity on Display event. Our longstanding partnership with and commitment to organizations such as the Urban League comes naturally. At Key, we recognize the critical role that the Urban League has in advancing economic recovery and responding to seminal moments that have and continue to occur across our city. We believe that when individuals come together in partnership, it is possible to reshape and revitalize communities and the way in which its members care for one another. And we believe that building a better world starts in places we call home and in the communities in which we work. KeyBank's groundbreaking $16.5 billion National Community Benefits Plan started in 2017 and is a shining example of Key's purpose to help our clients and communities thrive. Since our plan began, KeyBank has invested nearly $1 billion in Northeast Ohio, supporting small businesses, home lending in low to moderate income communities, affordable housing, and community development projects, and philanthropic efforts targeted towards education, workforce development, and safe and vital neighborhoods. Recently, we fulfilled our aggregate goal ahead of schedule and have increased our national commitment to $40 billion. Our investments will continue to focus on economic access, equity for underserved communities and populations. We hope you are enjoying meeting the people whose lives have been changed because of the League's entrepreneurship and workforce development programs. These programs and others are what KeyBank is committed to supporting. Thank you. Our journey wouldn't be possible without the guidance of CEO and President Marsha Mockaby and the dedication of our board members who are passionate about their volunteer roles. Good evening. On behalf of the Board of Trustees for the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, I extend my welcome and thank you for your participation in this very important event. I also want to extend a public thank you to our current and past board members, the Urban League staff, and our CEO and president. It is through your leadership and commitment that we continue to build initiatives to address social inequalities and lead forward in addressing social justice issues impacting our community. Our board is made up of many individuals who represent various organizations committed to furthering the League's work. So Janice, we've been celebrating this evening with all of these wonderful stories we've shared with our community yes. about the impact, right, that the Urban Correct. League has been making. And so I couldn't let this time pass without celebrating you. And I want to thank you for your leadership as our board chair you and all the welcome. great contributions that you've made. It has been wonderful and it has truly been a labor of love. And I thank you and I thank the board for all of your confidence in me. I don't know about you, but I am so excited about the way in which we were able to share the Urban League story tonight and have people see, you know, less about us, but more about the impact and what's happening um, as people receive services from the Urban League of Greater Cleveland. What do you think? I think this format and the way in which we're able to tell our story more broadly to the community um, has been truly invaluable. And hopefully we've inspired people to either serve on the board and join us in this work, or if people need to come and find services that we provide, whether it's workforce development training, mm -hmm. um, if they're interested in a capital access loan fund, 
um, you know, the myriad of ways in which they can be involved in the league. I mm -hmm. think this is a great way to show that everyone is welcome at the league and Absolutely. we have the ability to serve and make our community better. Now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our president and CEO of the National Urban League, Mark Morial. Greetings, I'm Mark Morial, proud to serve you as president and CEO of the National Urban League. The truth is, when Marsha Mockaby became president of the Cleveland Urban League, oh, 13 years ago, the Cleveland Urban League was at a crossroads fighting through some of the challenges that Cleveland faced, but also the challenges that a great organization faced as it thought, imagined, and envisioned its future. Marsha Maccabee took that situation, challenging as it was, and has been a transformative leader, not only for the Cleveland Urban League, but a transformative impact player for the Cleveland community. Her work, which is based on her faith, her humility, her great sense of purpose and being. She's truly made a great difference. And it is why the Cleveland Urban League is one of the most important and a leading nonprofit civil rights agency in Northeastern Ohio. I salute Marsha's work, the work of her staff, the work of all of our volunteers, and the work of all of you who've supported the Cleveland Urban League. It's work in workforce and reentry. It's work in the area of entrepreneurship is most notable for us. So, Marsha, congratulations. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your humility. Thank you for your sense of purpose. And thank you for your integrity. You are a great leader. I salute you and salute the Cleveland Urban League today. May all of you have a safe, healthy, and happy remainder of 2021 and a great 2022. Thank you, Mark. Truly one of our great leaders. The Stephen A. Mentor Legacy Award was initiated as a way of celebrating the Urban League's connection to our champion, mentor, and friend for years to come. We count his life as a gift to our community. The initial round of recipients selected for the award come from a list of individuals for whom Steve had expressed his respect and regard during his lifetime. They include influencers who serve far beyond their roles and titles, who give abundantly of their time, talent, and treasure, who serve as purposeful connectors and are regularly sought out for their advice and counsel on matters of critical importance. Carol Hoover is on that list. She is also a gift to our community. We honor her contributions today with this award. Carol, I am honored to present you with this salute and award today. We esteem you as a leader, a champion, a legend, and I am humbled and honored on behalf of the Urban League and our board and your community to present this award to you. Well, thank you very much, Marcia. This means a lot to me because of my great respect and love for Steve Mentor. And I so appreciate the work he did with you in the rebuild of the Urban League, and I'm sure he's happy today. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. I am honored to receive the Stephen A. Mentor Legacy Award. Steve was a dear friend to me, and I count myself truly blessed to have had him and Dolly in my life for many years. Steve was a person who placed great value on family. He was principled, spiritually grounded, and believed in actively living his Christian faith. He was a trailblazer in philanthropy and pioneered teaching others the importance of philanthropy in the black community. He exhibited high standards and supported those around him in achieving their best. In so many of the roles he held, he was a first, but he worked to ensure others could follow. 
His commitment to Cleveland was unparalleled. Through his leadership of the Cleveland Foundation, he formed trails on how to build up communities that would be the blueprint for national work by community foundations. I valued his counsel and miss it. I liked to think of us as the silk glove and the iron hand working for the greater good. Steve believed in the Urban League of Greater Cleveland's mission and his commitment to this organization's leadership and those they serve was consummate. He worked to improve the quality of life for all of us and leave a legacy for us to continue what he started. This is the mark of a perfect man. Thank you again for this award. I am deeply appreciative. I'm Pat Ramsey, board member and past chair of the Urban League of Greater Cleveland and recently retired Fifth Third Bank Community Economic Development Manager. I'm Dana Capers, Community Economic Development Manager for Fifth Third Bank. In June of this year, the Fifth Third Foundation and the National Urban League announced a new workforce development program offering upskilling and reskilling services to underemployed participants. The $1 million investment over the next two years is designed to help individuals gain meaningful employment and earn a livable wage at eight selected affiliate urban leagues. And yes, the Urban League of Greater Cleveland was selected. This phenomenal program addresses career readiness and is fundamental to leveling the playing field and giving individuals a better chance to succeed. Participants are provided career counseling services and are connected to advanced credentialing and certification opportunities. The Urban League will assist unemployed and underemployed workers acquire new skills to advance their careers. And job and career opportunities are in manufacturing, construction, healthcare, nonprofit, technology IT, financial services, and gaming. We at Fifth Third look forward to improving lives and building stronger communities with these impactful programs. I'm Brian Williams, PNC Bank's Community Development Banking Market Manager for Northern Ohio. PNC and the Urban League of Greater Cleveland share similar values and a commitment to our communities. Now more than ever, we support the Equity on Display event to provide equal opportunities for minorities across the region. More than two-thirds of our show has demonstrated the major impact that our programs and advocacy work has made in the lives of individuals. And this is just a small representation of the thousands who have benefited from our services this year alone. I'd like to talk about what I call our constellation of partners. Collaboration is in the DNA of the Urban League of Greater Cleveland. We have public-private partnerships, funder partnerships, and community partnerships. You'll note that the constellation of partners surround each of the three strategic delivery service areas, and they are entrepreneurship, workforce development, and education and youth development. Not only do our partners add capacity, but we also couldn't deliver the great services to our community to the degree that we do without the specific expertise in each of these areas that they bring. This is just a sampling of the partners who work with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland empowering communities and changing lives. And we invite you to visit our website for a complete list of all of our partners. At our annual meeting in the first quarter of 2022, we will be presenting awards to key partners that have been central to the growth and development of the league over the past year and who have helped to position us at new tables where we had not previously been invited to participate. The Urban League's mission also centers around advocacy and policy issues. For instance, in our leadership work in the racism as a public health crisis with the city of Cleveland, we are co-chairs proudly of that work for the city of Cleveland. Additionally, we are standing up a race and equity institute 
which will allow us to assist organizations to move from racial inequity towards racial equity. We wish we could highlight every single way in which the Urban League touches our community, but time just doesn't permit. There are, though, two areas that I would like to mention. In the area of voter rights, we co-sponsored with the NAACP a mayoral town hall hosted by the Cleveland Cavaliers at Rocket Mortgage Field House. Instead of a debate forum, we chose a fireside chat with Russ Mitchell of WKYC as our moderator. This well-attended event gave people the chance to see the candidates in a more relaxed atmosphere. The moderator kept the candidates on point with tough questions equally distributed so the audience could get a good sense of who the candidates were as individuals and leaders. Another critical issue of focus during the pandemic has been vaccine hesitancy and encouraging our community to become fully vaccinated. As a trusted community partner, we knew that it was important to lend our voices to medical research that was occurring and to the CDC guidelines because we knew that people were seeking additional information and confirmation upon which to make their decisions to get vaccinated. The campaign has personal implications for me because if the vaccine had been available, my dear husband James of 52 years might still be with us today. We wanted to be one of those trusted community voices to help people and thus Voices to Victory was born. You know those people who say, do what you love and you'll always be happy? Well, they're right. How do we know this? Because we help people like you do it every day. Dollar Bank, let's get you there. I will tell you, Marsha, everything that we've seen and heard on this journey just reinforces what partners and supporters already know about the Urban League, but new audiences have become acquainted with us tonight. As we've demonstrated throughout the evening, sometimes with a conductor, other times we're passengers. Well, whatever the case, the Urban League of Greater Cleveland was a route that was a good decision. Absolutely. And Leon, we know that people recognize that when they support the Urban League in the ways that you've described, that it's being entrusted to an organization that continues to develop partners and partnerships to the benefit of those we serve. Marsha Markaby, I will tell you, it is always a pleasure sharing the stage with you. And I feel the same, Leon. And we appreciate your joining us and, of course, supporting us. Good, Good night. night. This station is not responsible for and does not endorse any claims, products, or advertisers mentioned in this program, and disclaims any liability for any representations available. Philips recalled millions of CPAP, BiPAP, and mechanical ventilators, which are caused.